Welcome to Between the Studs, episode whatever, the Harry Potter episode. And today we're talking about Mr. Potter himself. We have with us again Julian. Thank you so Hi. much. She's a Potterhead, right? She's yes. Representing House Slytherin. Slytherin yes. Oh, she's a Slytherin. Uh oh. Cunning and ambitious. <laughs> Sco scoot over here. And then uh, Chris, of course, is with us today as well. And I'm representing Gryffindor. So I did want to start before we do anything else. What house would you guys be in? Slytherin. That you would put yourself if you I... were the sorting hat. I ex went underneath the sorting hat at Universal, and within four seconds, it said Slytherin. <laughs> <laughs> I did the Harry Potter tests online three times, Slytherin each time. Really? Any little BuzzFeed quiz I do, Slytherin. It's the cunning and ambitiousness. I go after what I want. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. What What about you makes you Slytherin? So you are cunning and ambitious. Yes. Uh, I would say my next house would probably be Ravenclaw. Okay. Because it brings in the, like, knowledgeable, creative side. So combine the two. Slytherclaw, I guess. Slytherclaw. <laughs> A Slytherclaw. Raventhin. I don't know. Oh, do you agree with that? Is she ambitious? Oh, totally, and... yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's she's Slytherin all the way. One hundred percent agree. Well, the internet and the actual Sorting Head at Universal said, it, and it must if be the true. internet said it. It's, it's <laughs> obviously true. true. Yeah. yeah. So, what about you? Where would you put yourself? Have I've, you ever taken? I've never any taken any of the tests. Uh -huh. You're assuming I would be not a Muggle. Right. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Maybe I'm just a Muggle, Justin. No. I, you are far <laughs> too magical to me. Maybe. Chris is magical, right? Chris is magical, definitely. I, I don't know what house I would be in, but I, I think I have a high midichlorian count. The force is magic. It's the same yeah. thing, right? Yeah. I have news to break to you both. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Both really muggles in real life. La, 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 no, la, no, la, no, la, no, la, no, 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 no. I don't know what I would be. I always like the bad guy, so I would say Slytherin, but that's that's not really my no personality. Way. No way. I was actually, my senior superlative was most intelligent. Mm -hmm. So I think I would be, you wouldn't guess right <laughs> by the way I act, <laughs> but um, I guess I, that would have to put me in Ravenclaw. A little bit of history, you know, I always like to nerd out about the facts and figures. Yeah. To put everyone's mind back into, when did the books come out? 1999? 1999. I, I think 1999. That. These were insanely popular. And I don't know if you guys remember how popular they actually were. I mean, broke all kinds of records. It's actually world record holder of most popular book series mm. ever. Ever. Wow. Like, beats Lord of the Rings. Oh, um, wow. Only because uh, Star Wars was not, not really a, <laughs> a pop, you know, popular in book form. Okay. Now, this is book series, not single books. The last installment, book seven, sold 11 million copies wow. in the U.S., in 24 hours. Oh. Insanely popular. Do you know what books actually are higher on the bestseller list worldwide since the world has been keeping track? That's it. So it's Harry Potter, wow. the Bible. That's Jeez. it. So just to remind everyone, what a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. What a crazy, gripping worldwide phenomenon that Harry Potter had become. Mm -hmm. And I have some theories on why that was. Do you guys remember when you were I was a wee not even baby. born yet, <laughs> but uh, when you did get around to reading the books, like what attracted you to it? The magic, I think. The idea that this common boy turned out to be something more than he thought he ever could be. I mean, he went from living under the stairs to going to a magical school. Mm -hmm. So the idea of that just broadened my horizons and was like you can honestly there's so much adventure out there for you to find you just have to you know get out from under the stairs to go find it just it was just that imaginative world mm -hmm. that drew me in definitely i'll be honest with you i went to take a test last night okay, okay. <clears throat> And one of the first questions was, what's your favorite spell? <laughs> and he had about 10 of them. And I was like, I have no idea. I remember him saying a couple of these things. You mm -hmm. know, the, all the Latin words, expelliamos. Yeah. Uh, that was it. <laughs> so if he had... And I, I said, I'm not taking this test. <laughs> he just closed the window. So imagine if he picked Havata like, Kadala as his first, like, Slytherin, Slytherin, <laughs> he's dead. The Killing Curse. Of course, the book came out in 1999. The first movie came out in 2001, which is when 
Lego released Harry Potter. Star Wars was the first licensed theme. Harry Potter was like up there. It wasn't maybe second, but third. It was all around mm -hmm. the same time, right? Because the studio series had some licensed stuff and yeah. that came around the yeah. same time yeah. as well. This is one of three themes that survived from yellow face to flesh tone. Really old Harry Potter sets have the yellow face and they actually kept the same print mm -hmm. and just changed the color of the minifigure head. So that's freaky to see. Mm -hmm. And it was that early 2000s aesthetic too, which is just weird. It's neat too, because I'll, I'll be at a convention <clears throat> selling minifigures mm -hmm. and a young kid will come up to the booth, maybe six years old, I'm just guessing, six to eight years old. And he says, oh, I want the, uh, I want that Harry Potter. And I'm like, and he's pointing at one of the yellow head ones mm -hmm. and i'm like well actually here's a light flesh one and it's actually cheaper because it's not as old yeah oh i only collect the yellow head and i'm like really <laughs> that's a snob collector for a kid yeah. but the funny thing is is there's that's common now mm -hmm. i mean it's, it is really more common than you would think and it's not just a one-time thing this yeah. has happened many times and one of the reasons is the uh the dk books the encyclopedias mm -hmm. for Harry Potter or Star Wars or anything like that. Oh, they're going back and reading these dictionaries, encyclopedias, and I've done that myself. I've laid in bed at night before I go to bed reading the Lego encyclopedia. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they're interesting and funny. Yes, you know, so it'll be describing this Harry Potter minifigure, and it'll say uh, blue coat with wrinkles in his shirt because he was fighting some so-and-so mm -hmm. because he threw it on real quickly you know oh it has a little story it points out silly little details yeah. and quite often they're not even true or something yeah you know so. speaking of little details did the theme harry potter introduce dual-sided heads i thought someone had told me that they were the first to use it because when ron and harry turned into crab and goyle that there was alternate heads Ooh. on those figures. Or Professor Quirrell with... Uh, That's right, or Professor... So yeah. were they the first ever? I don't know, okay. but they, they could be. I should have looked that up. Yeah, they, they could be. What a bad host I am. Yellow. What are your guys' opinions on flesh tone or yellow? I like the flesh... Have... I, I like changing the tone of the skin mm -hmm. because it, it's hard to capture. When they start making specific people... You know, it's hard to capture certain people like Mace Windu when they started making with Mace Windu for Star Wars. You know, it's it if they made him yellow, he could look just like Anakin or yeah. you know Luke Skywalker or somebody, and, and and they just don't look alike. Yeah, you know. So I I like the idea of it, but at the same time, they also made it really hard for a while to get certain skin tones. Now they're more common. Yeah, but for a while, if you wanted a dark skin tone, you had to get mace window yeah you know and that was it so i like it now that they have more colors available but for a while there we actually printed our own heads just to get different tones of uh skin oh color. cool yeah because people were asking for them they're like hey i want uh me wearing this shirt and okay it's like wow we don't have that <laughs> that skin color like yeah. we didn't make it it's not our fault yeah you know? and uh so we started making custom heads Okay. So what do you think is the appeal of people like the story you told going back and collecting only the yellow tone? Is it to match in their city? Or no, I think it's the the OG effect. Oh, okay. You know, which isn't I don't like that term OG because it's original gangster. Mm. You know? <laughs> it's, that doesn't really apply to Harry Potter. Harry's pretty but... gangster. <laughs> he holds his wand sideways. <laughs> but that's what people say. Yeah. That it's probably in their urban dictionary. So it's, it, yeah. you know, they want the original. How do you guys want to do this? Because Lego Harry Potter, as you guys know, went back almost immediately in the first few years mm -hmm. started remaking sets mm -hmm. so there's been two or three night buses there's been three hogwarts expresses so do we go by movie or by set i think if we're talking about the night bus we should look at all the different night buses okay. and same thing with hogwarts express and some of these other sets back here we have a lot to cover yeah <laughs> you, you can't know, even see the banners we, behind we, we've got three large two-foot racks of minifigures with five shelves each uh, here surrounding us. We've got all these awesome sets back here. I'm just, this is my favorite set. Okay, okay so why is that? We'll talk about that first. It's Diagon Alley Shops, but I call it Hermione's Bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> 
Every time I refer to it, I call it Hermione's bedroom. It has such unique pieces in it. I mean, you've got colors that I don't even know. That, I know a lot about Lego, and I could not tell you the names of some of those colors. That, that orange color there, mm -hmm. um, and bright light orange, possibly, right? Mm. Uh, Sounds right. You've got printed pieces. You've got trans pink treasure chest. Uh, a lot of these pieces are the ones that, when you're looking through a Lego collection, you find these pieces and you're like, "What did this come <laughs> in?" And and it came in the Hermione's bedroom. And this is sealed, unopened. That one is sealed, unopened. Yeah. Wow. They also gave you a cardboard cutout mm -hmm. to yeah. put behind your scene that you build, which is really cool, but. It, it makes it more affordable. Like, if you had to build the whole scene around mm -hmm. it and make it more 3D, then it would cost more money. But they were able to lower the price of the set, even though they had all these expensive parts in there, by yeah. putting a cardboard cutout behind it. That treasure chest is trans? Trans pink. That's yeah. what? Some of these colors are wild. And they did three of these, right? Different scenes. One with Harry, one with Ron. And I think some of them had cloth. Pieces mm -hmm. like this one has a cape, a couple of capes, it's got mm -hmm. two capes yeah. with uh, stars on it, and trans neon orange scorpion, scorpion and a, yeah. a trans green frog. Yeah, that is nuts. You've got dark pink in there. I mean, it's a really, really a cool set. And this one is from 2001. It has to be. It's one of the first set. Yeah, 2001. So this is one of the first Harry, line of Harry Potter sets. They all had these brown boxes that looked like stone. And, uh, oh, you also have chrome coins in there. Mm. It's almost like Lego went out of their way to put all the oddest, rarest pieces yeah, in, one set. in one set. And they, mm. they succeeded in this little gem of a set. It's $110. It's brand new, sealed, never opened. That's nuts. And so what's funny is this isn't the only one we've had. I think I've had about four of these in the Always shop. Hermione? Yeah. This set, specific set, yeah. Okay, so we haven't ever gotten the Rons or the Harrys? Not that I can think of. No. Weird. Yeah. This is the best one, too, mm -hmm. so I'm glad about that. Oh, did we say we're talking about one through four movies, one through four? Yeah, movies? we didn't mention that exactly. Uh, we're, we're only focusing on one through four, just because... We're, we're going to try to break it up because yeah. of time. It would take... We want to cover everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we get into Fantastic Beasts or the later movies, then we just, we won't have to. Yeah, it yeah. Will. You guys might fall asleep by then. Yeah. So yeah. we don't want that to happen. <laughs> no. Plus the later movies and, and Fantastic Beasts, it's going to be a little more adult, right? Yeah, yeah I would say a little bit more. <laughs> Let's start with uh, the Philosopher's Stone, not the Sorcerer's Stone. Do you guys know why that was changed? Tell us. It was because in England, the mm -hmm. Philosopher's Stone is a known story. People have heard of it. It's like King Arthur or any other. It's it's more well known. Whereas in America, people never really heard of that. Mm -hmm. So they changed it because they felt like dumb Americans would go, Philosopher's Stone? What does that have to do with mm -hmm. wizards? Because mm -hmm. that's how Americans sound. <laughs> so they changed it. And I, I think they've. it seems like they've gone back because the movie was called... The uh, Sorcerer's Stone. Sorcerer's Stone. Yes. Okay. Did they change it for the U.S. I have release heard. or the British release? I don't know because I've heard both. I usually refer to Bricklink for all of my information, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it says Sorcerer's Stone. Okay, so that's well, what I'm going with. I, I deny your reality. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's Philosopher's Stone. Okay, and there it the is. Sorcerer's Stone. Oh, you said it. It's on the box. You're, you're... It's on the box. <laughs> it's on the. Okay, I I concede. So this is where Harry meets Fluffy. Cerberus, right? Uh, it's Fluffy. Oh, people want to call him Cerberus or the three-headed dog. Yeah. It's like, it's Fluffy. That doesn't look like a Fluffy. We do have fluffy. plenty of Fluffies. Mm -hmm. Now, you said we lose the heads on these. The heads lot. fall off, yeah. That's the only piece that's detachable from the rest of the body. The heads are really cool. They move up and down. They're, they're like, hey, I need a Fluffy head. And it's like, yeah, join, join the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, join the club. <laughs> we used to find them in collection. It's like, oh, yes. You know, it's like a, You've got one. a big, mm -hmm. exciting thing because uh, they go for about $8 per head. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so this was this was part of the uh, original aesthetic. So they changed the castle several times. This one had, of course, the same green roof, which they kept for a while, but it had a lot more gray mm -hmm. 
and they had a little bit of 10. Of course, later in the line, because the original line ran from 2001 to 2005, during that time, that line changed a lot because they went to the all 10 mm -hmm. at some point. These original few sets had a more ugly style, it was more hodgepodge with the colors, or with the black and more gray, and then they moved to the complete 10. Mm -hmm. I, I liked the fact that they were all tan and sand green because anytime you got a big collection, you would a Lego collection, you would know that, oh, there's Harry Potter sets. Yes, there. and it was a neat uh, distinguishing factor. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you'd know immediately, but it was just cool looking. And just like the modern sets they're still releasing today, you can put all of them together to make a huge Hogwarts castle. Oh, that's awesome. I think they released a giant Hogwarts set at some point, right? In this original style. Yeah, I wouldn't call it giant. It wasn't as big as the others. It was about the same size as the Chamber of Secrets with the Basilisk. That one with Fluffy, we sell that used for $90. Yeah. Fluffy himself is 35 Each figure is probably hovers around $10. Okay. Um, it's hard to find those Harry Potter capes. We're unique to Harry Potter with the stars on them, you know? Mm -hmm. And here's one thing I always wondered, does the stars go on the inside of the cape or the back of the cape? Hmm. Thoughts? Uh, I would Slytherin? Say the, I would are, say the inside. What are the stars? It's like a classic Do they have stars stereotype? in the movie or in the book? <laughs> No, I, don't think I feel so, like the only no. cape that has stars on the inside would be Harry's invisibility cloak. I think that's what I remember. Okay, there yeah. Were all the textures, but and you can't on see him because it's invisible. Mm -mm. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> what bothered me? Okay, nerd. This is an un um actually moment. Excuse me. <laughs> um, actually. In, in, the, in the books, in the books, they, they were always described as wearing robes. They never had ties or shirts or pants. They always described them as robes. In fact, they even made a point to go and say they changed into their pants and shirt. Mm -hmm. But it, I guess that looks too stupid. So they didn't do that in the movies? Because seeing a bunch of people in graduation rooms <laughs> running around. <laughs> Those 24, no, they were for graduation. That's right. <laughs> did, so why were they wearing robes? Was that, is that something they do at school in England? Uh, no. no, I believe that's what wizards do. Yes. Wizards don't wear normal oh, clothes. Okay. And they make a big point of that throughout the books, that wizards look different mm -hmm. because they wear different clothes and they're very odd in their dress and mannerisms and stuff. And so they normalified it a little bit with more of a British style mm -hmm. school uniform and tie and stuff with the crest and everything. I think their robes did have the crest. Their robes did have the crest. But yeah. in the books, they were wearing actual robes. See, I know we have tons of minifigs. Oh, yes. But do we have any more from the Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> the Diagon Alley Shops was from the Sorcerer's okay, Stone. Okay, yep. This is pretty generic, right? It could be... No, no, it has the no. Dementors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it can't be. Quidditch, that could be generic, right? Uh, yeah, it's pretty generic, especially since it does have the smaller leg Terry. So that could put him at his first year. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Hogwarts. How this, about when, when he goes to the uh, vault? Yeah! Gringotts. This is awesome, because it comes with a little piece of track. It has, was this the first appearance of Hagrid, or or was Hagrid's hot? Well, the first? It, that was from 2001. Okay. And so it, he came out in the same uh, year. Year, okay, so he had several. So he was in multiple sets. And, and again, Gringotts has that weird aesthetic that the castle has as well, with the... Gray, black, same green roof. So it's like Green Guts is in Hogwarts in this set. Well, they know they also had a bank. That's right. He's like Santa Claus over the here. The Quidditch set. The OG. <laughs> what a what an unusual sport. So here's a Quidditch shop. That was the Quidditch shop. Quality set. Quidditch this supplies. Quality Quidditch supplies and uh, yep. Malfoy has like a package. And everything here's here's what's a little interesting so these came out in the same year in the same series you notice that the set with fluffy the forbidden corridor says and the sorcerer's stone what's that one say nothing it says nothing, nothing. so what what lego did is they came out with sets that they wanted to be a little bit more generic some of the sets look like they're from one movie but mm -hmm. then harry potter is wearing an outfit that he never wore in that movie Okay. So not all the sets are Can specific be. to oh, Okay. And one thing you'll notice about this set is that the snitch is chrome gold. <gasps> it's a chrome gold stud. 
What? And it was actually a chrome gold stud in multiple sets. All, all the Quidditch sets from the first series had that chrome gold stud. How often do you actually see that? Never. Like, how do you, oh how often gosh, do you look? Yeah. There it is right there. Show the camera that because it's a little bit more prominent right there where Harry's grabbing it. It's super, <laughs> super rare. You never just go through Lego collections and find that. Yeah. It, was it Even only in it was in all these sets. Was it only in Harry Potter? Chrome gold stud? I, I don't know, but it's the only one that I can think of. Another thing that I really like about these these first series Harry Potter sets is they didn't have stickered sheets. These are all printed pieces. So you've got that flag with the brooms on it mm -hmm. for the Quidditch shop. And how have you ever seen that flag in mm -hmm. a collection? I haven't either. That's how rare these pieces are. And all the books, too. Yeah, all the books are printed on... They give you a couple extra capes that are pretty rare. And it's just a tiny little set. And this is actually a very unique and rare set in that it's a Harry Potter set without Harry Potter in it. Um... Harry, Harry Potter appeared in almost every single Harry Potter set. Mm. It was, I think, out of like 50 sets, it was probably like 40 of them had Harry Potter in it. Mm -hmm. So it was like, this is a little unique because it does not have Harry Potter. If you guys were Quidditch players, what position would you play? Well, I, I'd have to relate it to soccer, and I play defense in soccer, so I guess I'd be... Would you be a beater? If, yeah, if that's what beater. you call it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'd be a beater. I mean, essentially, our job is to make sure you don't get bloodied up too badly. <laughs> that sounds like your type of thing. Yeah, because huh? um, what we do is, like, when you think it's the quaffle that, like, comes zooming towards the players, we have to beat them towards the other team. The bludgers. The bludgers. We have mm -hmm. to make sure that they don't hit us, but they hit the other people. Yes, and you get it's, to have a little bat. Yeah. You well, fly around on a broom 95 miles an hour no. with a bat. <laughs> Hitting these balls that are flying at you and it's like just, you know, regular day on the field. I was wondering that in Harry Potter, Harry Potter is the chosen one kind mm -hmm. of where mm -hmm. he is the most powerful magic and is, is there a, a scale in Harry Potter? No, that... he is actually not that powerful. Correct me if I'm wrong. His power came from when Voldemort accidentally put a piece of his power in him. Mm -hmm. He himself... There's nothing remarkable about him. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. He's not super powerful. He's gifted in certain things, but so is everyone. Mm -hmm. um, like he's gifted in Quidditch. He's gifted in Quidditch because his dad was really good. Um, and he's really good at disarming. His his signature move is the disarming spell. Okay. So that's very passive. You know, mm -hmm. you knock your opponent's weapon out of their mm -hmm. hand rather than beating them down, which is a good, I think, thing for your main hero to have. Yeah. But, I mean, am I missing anything? It's pretty much um, his only, his only like, great powers come from pretty much happenstance. It's also... <laughs> He's in luck. <laughs> and, yeah, you could, put, you could put it as, like, he just had so much, like, I guess, passion to become something so great mm -hmm. for his parents yeah so that that could have had a little bit of an influence in there yeah. she he has the sounds it was his passion yeah. his drive and his love for those around him that he became so powerful in the eyes of everyone else he lifted everyone's spirit because yeah. they were like oh he was just a baby yeah and he was able to do this so he was this beacon of hope i guess yeah because like everyone at the school is like oh we know who he is We've heard all about him. Mm -hmm. Him as a baby, looking him go. Yeah, like he can do anything. So can we. He definitely lifted everyone's spirits multiple times. How anime? Mm -hmm. He could speak to snakes. He could mm -hmm. speak parcel tongue because of Voldemort. Mm -hmm. He was able to beat Voldemort in the wand duel because he just so happened to pick the same wand that had the twin cores mm -hmm. on it. He got through a lot of the stuff. That is a critique of Harry Potter. He got through a lot of the, especially the earlier books, the challenges, the Chamber of Secrets and stuff, because he had help. So he wasn't really a chosen one in Sheer the sense of luck. power. He was more a chosen one because of happenstance. Hmm. But they don't really explain, maybe on the ancillary media, on the Potter mm -hmm. homepages and stuff, they explain magic more. I know the force is an external force. Mm -hmm. So they, you have to be gifted to be able to use it, but it doesn't really come from yourself, Yeah. right? It's it's not an energy that you have to expend. So in, in a way, it is infinite. Like he also but, had all these little things to help him mm -hmm. throughout his journey. Like number one being the invisibility cloak, mm -hmm. which we have a minifigure of, that I think is hilarious looking. The new CMS? It looks this? like the, it's the <clears throat> giant shiny telescope looking. He looks just like a giant satellite dish. That was the second <laughs> invisibility cloak. The first one only came with the big Hogwarts castle back here mm -hmm. with the red boxes. But no, he had the cape, he had the sword eventually. 
He had the broom. He has his owl. He just mm -hmm. has all these little things yeah. that definitely help boost him yeah. through a lot of these events. But they don't really rank power. The only one who is supposed to be pretty much invincibly strong is Dumbledore. Voldemort is the only one close to him, and even Voldemort fears Dumbledore. Mm -hmm. They don't really explain how magic works if if it's like an external power or can you get tired? Can you cast so many spells you get tired? Yeah, like they've brought that up before. They and have? You definitely see it kind of like when we're running, we run out of energy. Definitely magic, I feel, it they uses prove, energy. Because in the big fight, you saw them getting tired. Mm -hmm. You saw them dropping like flies, yeah. especially in the last, the big battle of Hogwarts. Throughout all their little wand duels they do during school, you'd see them getting tired. You'd see them losing mm -hmm. their energy, so I feel like there definitely was an aspect of that. So there is an internal force you have to use. Oh, whereas yeah. the force is, from what I understand, is completely external. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have the ability to use it, it's infinite. There is mm -hmm. no limit. Well, but if you have a higher midichlorian count, you can use you it. Can you can access more of it. Better than yes. Than so, with a lower one. favorite... While well, we're talking about nerd stuff, favorite scene from book or movie? Do you, is was there anything you remember like oh that was cool or oh that really resonated with um, me? For me, it was they're all in the dining hall in the great hall when they first get there and it's their sorting ceremony, which I know in the movies it was a really fun fact. First years they didn't get to see the dining hall. They didn't get to see the set until they walked in for that first take of them walking through the great hall. They did, like, that was something I heard in an interview with one of the actors. They're like, we didn't see it until we actually walked in. So our reaction was genuine. It was like a genuine, like, oh, my mm -hmm. gosh, we're, a, we're here for the Halloween part where they are all in the dining hall. And you just see, what, what was his name? The guy with two, I'm blanking on it. Uh, he, Quirrell. 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 You see him run through the center of the great hall, like, troll in the dungeon. I thought you guys would want to know that. <laughs> it just passes <laughs> out. Like Jillian said, I mean, she didn't just name one scene. There's so many different scenes. Yeah. Uh, every movie has so many good ones. The one, when I think back on Harry Potter, the only one I think of is, I, can't, I don't know what movie it's from, but when they're in the street and these classical British buildings separate mm -hmm. and there's a building in between them and then they walk in and then it closes back up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just so, such a British scene, you yeah. know, it goes from being a more modern British building to a classic old yeah. British building. That, that to me, is really neat. You know? I think that was the fifth movie when they're going to the secret hideout mm -hmm. that has all the members of the Order, the Order of the Phoenix in it. I think it was that house, like the safe house that they were all in. It's just so British and every yeah. and, and visually stunning, too. Yes. The whole mo all the movies are so visually yeah. stunning. Mm -hmm. That was another thing she was really good at, <clears throat> is coming up with these wacky little creative ways of the way they work mm -hmm. and use magic and stuff. My scene, I don't know why, and I don't actually remember how they did it in the movie, but it was—it felt so dramatic, and I get tingles when I read it for the first time. When Moody, and I know we're jumping ahead in movies, when Moody was explaining the unforgivable curses, mm -hmm. and he went through all of them, and it was such an intense scene, when he did all the curses to the spider, and then he killed it with Havata Kedavra. And then he said, it's unblockable, you can't run from it, there's only one person to ever survive it, and he's sitting right in front of me and that at that like, moment i was oh. just, if i was harry i would have just been like <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that scene just like even now like, like can i, I go just, to the bathroom yeah it gets me goosebumps it was so such a yeah cold, i just got like, some intense... just like thinking of it yeah oh my such an amazing scene. the same spell that killed cedric diggory that Worm, wormtail used think... because wormtail yeah. yeah peter Pettigrew just killed yeah. him real quick. I mean, yeah. It was, just, it was, it was like a quick yeah. death, I remember. Yeah. I, remember and, I was shocked at that point, and I yeah. like read about it in the books, and I, but just how fast it happened, I was like, but, and yeah. they, oh, he's gone. They never, that was Goblet of Fire, right? Mm -hmm. And they never actually made a Cedric Diggory minifigure until much later. The C on. Really? The CMF the was the CMF first one? The CMF was the first one. And, oh. and now there's and different so variations. people were making custom minifigures. All those years went by from 2004 to 2018 with no Cedric Diggory minifigures. So he wasn't in any of the challenges? They didn't make him until 2018. Huh. Yeah, they, made, not in the... they made Victor Crumb, mm -hmm. but they didn't make Cedric Diggory and they didn't make the LaFleur girl. Is that, was that her name? LaFleur. Yeah, LaFleur. Yeah, LaFleur Delacour. <laughs> her sister. I forget her sister's name. So there's this, this Triwizard, one of the Triwizard challenge sets there. So whenever <laughs> anybody made a custom Harry Potter minifigure, it was almost always uh, Cedric Diggory. The other thing they never made 
uh, up until 2018 was another house besides Slytherin and Gryffindor. Mm -hmm. They never made Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. Well, you never saw them either, right? Those were the only two houses you ever saw in the movies or in the books. You never... Well, Cedric I don't, was Hufflepuff, right? Yeah, but you, Hufflepuff. you never visited them. You never even mm. saw them, I think, until but the final movie. Quidditch, though, they did have, like, in 2018, they made the Quidditch match again, and they included the other house. Oh, well, I meant, like, physically play. saw the oh, okay. area. You never They're saw the Yeah, the common Yeah, area. you only ever really get to see Gryffindor and Slytherin. You get to mm. see those two, and then I believe in the last movie... During the Battle of Hogwarts, you see the Ravenclaw. They would never get to see Hufflepuff. Yeah. And Cedric was popular, too, yeah. at that time from being in Twilight. So people yeah. wanted Pattinson. they wanted that figure. Yeah. So interesting they never made him. And I think mm. they never made him because, because he, he died. died. Yeah. And it's, uh, Kids open it up. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's why they na never named any Deathly Hollow sets, either. Because it's, that death in the title. Because order. it had, yeah, it's the little huh. really scary. Yeah. Because yeah. so, there were some scary moments in those <clears throat> films yeah. and in the books. They weren't just reading them. And I'm like, there were moments where, like, leading up to it, I was, like, wondering, I'm like, am I going to be am I gonna be able to look at this in a movie? Like, because this, this gets dark. Yeah. Am I going to be able to watch this actually happen in front of me? Yeah. And, of course, they were able to make it work. But yeah. it's definitely something that, like, you're like, what's going to happen? Who's going to die? And that's, again, going back to what I was saying earlier, that's what something she was so good at doing is mixing the dark, serious elements with silly, goofy kid humor mm -hmm. and just interweaving them. Sometimes the movies, it was hard to capture that tone to shift from that, but the books really did it well. They really did a good job with yeah. the fourth one, especially with the Goblet of Fire, because yeah. they truly, all the actors did a great job portraying how serious this tournament was. Yeah. And how, like, when Harry's name gets called, it could be a moment of, oh, great, it's Harry again. But every, all the adults you can see were, like, petrified. Yeah. They were like, this kid, this is a child we're sending into this. Some of these other people are teenagers. Yeah. They can maybe handle it. But this is a child. Yeah. And it was very serious moments that they had to be like, and then Dumbledore was like, well, you have to do it. You're going in. Good luck. That uh, Triwizard Challenge, what year did that come out? 2005. 2005. Okay, so here's the graveyard duel Ooh. scene from the Triwizard Challenge. Well, spoilers. <laughs> you've got you've got all the characters in there, right? Except two. Cedric Diggory. Cedric Diggory. Diggory. That's, that's the 2005 set that he would have, yeah. probably should have been in. Yeah. I mean, like, it's going to sound really bad, but that could be Cedric. <laughs> uh, yes, it could. Speaking of skeletons, so Jillian's pointing to, this, to one of the skeletons that's in the set. But you get That's, four skeletons in that set. Yeah. And a pretty, sand green skeleton? Yeah, mm -hmm. One of them is sand green with a black head. One of them is a black skeleton. And then you get two white ones. And that's just really unique. And also, do you ever see those printed parts? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, what are those? They're vines. Yeah. Oh, this is the new version of that same scene. Do we have that for here in box? That's one of the things about the Harry Potter Lego sets that I think probably get people into Harry Potter mm -hmm. because they're Lego fans and they like the parts so much that they, they buy the Harry yeah. Potter sets and then they, they they probably haven't even seen the movies. And yeah. so then Lego actually gets people watching Harry Potter and that is the purpose of marketing. Yeah. And, and once yeah. you watch it, you want to read them. Into, oh, yeah. yes. And then there's those parents. I know mine weren't like this, but a lot of my friends were... It's like, oh, if it's a book and a movie, you have to read the book before you can go see the movie. And I don't know if that was like an educational thing that the parents were like, read more. But it got people it to got read the book, go the see the movies, and then buy the Lego sets and then do it all over again <laughs> for the next one. Symbiotic re relationship. So we were talking about the first sets that came out in 2001. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that's called Nocturne Alley. Ooh, and, the mm -hmm. first Nocturne Alley. That's not... I don't think they labeled that as being from a specific movie. But it does have... It's got Harry Potter in his green sweater and... Lucius uh, Malfoy. Lucius Malfoy. And then just a whole bunch of rare, rare printed parts. It's got a, a dead hand on a mm -hmm. one by 2 tile. It's got a glow-in-the-dark spider. And then a the brain on a clear uh, minifigure clear head. minifigure head, yeah. Oh, and then like cool. the cash registers unique to that set. You know they could have used any cash register, mm -hmm. but, they, but they but they custom printed a an old style. Yeah, and then that brick with the eye on it. Way they to put go, a dark Lego. Gray owl in there, and I think owls. 
were introduced in the Harry Potter sets. Yes. Really? Yeah, they did not exist before. In 2010, when they started printing on the owls, you didn't have to be a Harry Potter fan to want to print it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so they Hedwig and the the brown owl, Ron's owl, were five, six dollars each, mm-hmm. and everybody wanted them. And and then now you can get them. They're a dime a dozen. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know because they're coming in the CMF packs and everything else. You could get yeah. them in uh, poly bags too. And now they have the new flying owl, which I love. Oh yes, yes. I with love the, that. With the letter. Yes, I love it. Mm-hmm. Yes, you mentioned how the sets appeal to people who weren't even into Harry Potter, and I totally agree with that. I I like spooky stuff, so I bought the graveyards. I like Harry Potter, mm-hmm. and I did read it, but I liked it more because it was a graveyard scene with wizards in it, and the castle stuff is castle stuff, and it's mm-hmm. not gray. It's a yeah. castle that's not gray. Yeah, <laughs> and, and green, and yeah. all these colors. Especially the older sets had monsters and, mm-hmm. and creatures. Speaking of that, we mentioned the troll. The bathroom troll. <laughs> that funny story. There was a, I think it was in elementary school, I had a teacher who always said, now everyone has to go to the bathroom with a buddy. And we'd all be like, why do we have to go with a buddy? And her exact answer was, do you want to end up like Hermione? <laughs> And from that moment on, I always went to the bathroom with a buddy because I always felt like I would be that kid who would be in the bathroom and then something would walk in. There might be a troll. They'd be like, well, we don't remember what happened. She went to the bathroom and then, you know, a troll appeared. Kind of like Fluffy. He he came out at the same time and he's got these, these, this cloth on him. Elastic cloth pieces. The vest and the loincloth. And they they get lost all the time. Yeah, they're very hard to find the bathroom troll with all his pieces. But it's so cool that they put cloth on him. Yeah, and it's just so neat. It's like dressing up a doll. I think yeah, it's so interesting to have such a big, like torso and body, and then have the little mini big head. Well, he had a tiny head in the mm-hmm. movie, and I think they described it that way in the book. I love his oversized club. Now, was that ever used before or after? Yeah, they gave it to the uh, Fantasy Kingdom trolls. Oh, okay. Is that a club the size of like a regular? It's a mini figure. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and he only moves on his right arm. Nothing else in his head. Yeah. Nothing mm-hmm. else moves. And he's sand blue, or is that dark sand blue? What is what is that color? Sand. Sand blue. I, I think it's sand blue. Yeah. Okay. I love how they were coming out with all these like mini figures from the different movies. Mm-hmm. Just like even like it may be 2019, but they're coming out with all these poly bags of ones from the older films. Yeah. Like we got Cedric. In a poly bag set. Yeah. And he came with the little cup. And I thought that yeah. was really cool. The sets ended in 2010, the original line. Mm-hmm. Uh, they skipped 2006 altogether. There were no sets released. I think 2007 only had one set. And it was a book. That was it. I think it's because the movies ended mm-hmm. at that point. And, and the movies were getting older, mm-hmm. too. So they weren't making them. Yeah. Because they were the Deathly Hollows and um, That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. The Half Blood Prince. They just weren't as kid friendly for the Lego sets. And th- at that time, man, before 2018, mm-hmm. so from what was it, 2017 on down to what, 2010? So there was like a six or seven year time yeah. period yeah. where you couldn't get Harry Potter sets. Yeah. And these sets were so expensive and sought after we had people calling us at the store because we've been open for six years now so that would take us back to 2015 we had people calling us in 2016 and they were like all my kid wants for christmas is harry potter and because harry potter stuck around like it never died yeah because the movies are just so good and quite honestly i don't think it ever will so in 2016 and 2017 they and news of fantastic beasts was coming out so the movies were getting popular again people were traveling from other states just to come to our store to get harry potter and people would buy any harry potter set for any price just to have just to have it to give to their kid for christmas because that's all that was on their christmas list and the kids don't understand santa claus isn't making harry potter sets anymore kids yeah (laughs) the elves can't make them anymore and i would try to talk the parents out of it i'm like this is a collector's item this is you're gonna give it to a (laughs) seven-year-old 
Diagon Alley is a five hundred dollars <laughs> sealed collector's item for adults. Don't don't yeah. give it to your six year old yeah. for Christmas. <laughs> But that's but what they want. That's wanted. what he asked for. Yeah, the deep pocket parents. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of love, parents. That's a lot of love. Actually, to correct myself, I, actually, 2011 was the final full year mm-hmm. of Harry Potter. 2012 was the one that only had one set, and it was a it was a book with an exclusive Harry Potter in a suit. It didn't come back till 2018. That was the suit that he wore to the uh, dance for the Triwizard yes. Challenge. Yes. Yes. Vault, which there is that set of. It's called the Hogwarts Clock Tower. Yeah, there he is wearing a different suit. The, the same suit, but a different version of that minifigure. And it was interesting, I read that they switched to <clears throat> flesh fairly early. It was 2004, I think. So, the third year, the series, they switched. So the yellow flesh is only the 2001, 2002, and 2003. Mm-hmm. That was really interesting to me. And we mentioned earlier they kept the same print on the flesh face. It's It's scary. (laughs) I think Ron's was the one that freaked me out the most. I'm like... It didn't look right. "Mm." (laughs) They have these weird cartoon mouths. Like you can see it up there in the ship set. They look scary. I don't like them. The Durmstrang ship. We actually have an opened version of this upstairs. And this was, so this would have been 2005, the same year as the Graveyard Duel. So they and came out with a lot of the Goblet of Fire sets. Mm-hmm. And if you look at them, they got those little beady eyes. They came out with two versions of the Durmstrang. Right? <laughs> they, were, they were the same set, but one had, it was, I think it was a Target exclusive, it had four bonus minifigures. Really? Yeah, so they gave you Hermione, Dumbledore... You know, Harry again in his Triwizard outfit, and then Ron, because the original one only came with uh, Victor Crumb and Igor. Oh. So, those are the only two figures. This big, big set, and mm-hmm. it just came with two figures. So, this is the Target exclusive one? With that this is the here. Target exclusive, yeah. Oh. And it, again, this, and you can't really see from this, but there's so many pieces that are unique and only came in this set. Those flags that are hanging down, mm-hmm. the shields, the the minifigures, the light blue crow's nest barrel, medium blue, I or think. medium blue. Yeah. They chrome. They put chrome pieces on it. And then oh, what's yeah. really cool is they added their own touch. The black falcon shield on it is so neat. You know, this That's is two thousand five. Awesome. The black falcons were long gone by then. The old castle theme. And it's really neat that they added that. And then the ship itself is the ship soul. That's mm-hmm. all one piece ship soul that actually floats, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Now, what is interesting is they do all this, and they don't give Victor Crumb a unique face. Yeah, Crumb's yeah. right there. That's a hair. That's also used in the Indiana Jones sets. The oh, German really? and Russian soldiers mm. have that head, and uh, they might have given it to a few other people as well. Really? Yeah. Was Karkaroff, the, is that how you say his name? Mm-hmm. Was, was he... That's a unique head on him, okay. Igor. But what's also interesting is their hats are not unique to them. They're unique in that color. But they also use these hats in the Adventurers line. Remember, uh, what is her name? Pip, Pip or whatever? Yeah. Johnny Fender's girl. That's neat that they brought that That back. was in the Himalaya? Yeah, Himalayan exactly. Something. These were rare sets. They did not produce a lot of these sets in 2005. Lego wasn't as popular back then. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So they, they really, they probably produced more from in 2001 than they did in 2005. This is when Lego was going through financial problems in 2004. So uh, part of their restructuring was changing the colors, you know, from the old light grays and dark grays to the new bluish mm-hmm. grays. Look, they also give you those chrome studs. Oh, like you got four. And that's what makes these very valuable. Mm-hmm. is you just don't see them very often because they didn't produce very many. Lego doesn't release production numbers. So you can kind of see, the, the if you're into Lego, you can kind of see over the years. Right now, they are producing the heck out of the Harry Potter sets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the minifigures are cheap. I have never seen Lego Harry Potter figures so affordable mm-hmm. to get. So if you want to collect Lego Harry Potter figures... Now is the time to buy the newer figures Mm -hmm. from the new sets because they're the cheapest they're ever going to be. Once they're discontinued and gone, they're only going to go up from here. You mentioned how 
Harry Potter stays in the limelight. Oh, yeah. Warner Brothers is doing a good job of keeping it going with the Wizarding World in the Universal Studios. Mm -hmm. I think some of these later releases actually coincided with the Harry Potter Lego video game. Rather, because it was the, long after yes. the movie had stopped. Mm -hmm. They released like... Years one through four as one mm -hmm. game, and then uh, five through seven as another I game. I love playing those. I still do. If you were to sit in front of me and say, here you go, I'd be gone for maybe four or five <laughs> hours. I'd be like, just bring me a drink or a water or something, and I'm good. Who was the crazy last super hard unlockable character on those games? Oh, God. Oh, now you're testing me. Well, I haven't you... played them in so long. Did you ever play many of the Lego games? My, my son did, and I watched him play the okay. Harry Potter one. He's read all the books, so he was really into Harry Potter. We went to the Wizarding World at Universal mm -hmm. Studios, so I was on, on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. always, with Harry Potter. Speaking of with the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, it is so good at Universal Studios that I... I had a tear come to my eye, and I didn't even know that I still had tears. And <laughs> I my, thought I used them all up. <laughs> my, my son was right at the right age. He was uh -huh. maybe 10 years old, and he just was in Harry Potter, in the world I can see him. Harry Potter. I can see and him being that way. It felt like we were there. Yeah. It's so cool. The only thing I don't like about it is it's split between the two parks, mm -hmm. so it really is almost like a two-day thing. Like My roommate, she just wanted to go down there, and I was like, you're going to need a day dedicated to Harry Potter. Yeah. And two park tickets. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna need the yeah. park hoppers for it because it now expands over from Islands of Adventure into Universal Studios because you have the two parks and mm -hmm. there's a train that'll take you from one to the other. And if you don't have the park hopper pass, it's like an extra $90 or something yeah. just to ride the train. Yeah, compared to Disney, that's still cheap. It's so yes. horrible. Um, I went when they first opened, so I have not even seen the new stuff. I, I, I've I only seen the original one, which is at Universal? It's at um, or is that Islands, Islands of Adventure. That's Islands of Adventure. Interesting thing I forgot to mention earlier about the yellow skin tones for the early sets. Mm -hmm. The only two minifigures that did not have yellow skin. Do you guys think you could name them if you could guess? From the early sets? From the early, when they were all yellow, the first three years. Do well, you... I'll let Julian try first. They're in front of you if you want to scan. Dumbledore and Hagrid? No, they had yellow Hagrid. skin as well. They it was... Oh, they both did. Oh, who was it? Dobby and Griffok. Uh, Do Dobby and the uh, oh, Goblin. I didn't think about them. But they are minifigures. You're, you're yeah. probably right. Skin. What... What I read didn't consider them minifigures. What I read, it was Snape, who had the glow-in-the-dark head, oh. for some reason, and Peeves was gray. Yeah. Oh. So those were the two. And we have a Peeves. They never <laughs> came back out with a Peeves either, did they? Wasn't he the only Peeves? I don't... They, really? They didn't come... Yeah, it's funny because the new sets, they're, they're so much coming out. Mm -hmm. And they're covering everything. And they, they just really haven't come out with Peeves again. Which is a shame. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of... They do have nearly headless Nick. Snape. Here he is here. And I just... I still don't understand this figure. He's got <laughs> the glow-in-the-dark head, but he's got... It is from a very specific scene you want yes, to talk about? Yes, he has yes, a cat yes. hanging from his torso. <laughs> yes, what is he does. So, when it was in the third movie, when Professor Lupin is teaching Defense Against the Dark Arts, he has them face a bogot, I believe it was called. Bogot. Bogot. And it basically can transform into your worst fear. Mm -hmm. And Ron's worst fear was Snape. Well, it was spiders. Uh, it, Neville. It was oh, Neville. Neville's worst yeah. fear was Snape. And he, Lupin was like, well, think of it as something funny. And you had to do the spell ridiculous or something. Ridiculous. Or ridiculous. Ridic ridiculous. I can't remember. And it turned Snape into wearing Neville's grandmother's clothes. So, so he that's was there what in that his is. giant So that hat. is that, that figure's been around for 22 years, and I've never known that. Yeah. And I've always just wondered. So that's not actually Snape. That is a Bogart. That okay. is... Bogart, the Bogart taking Snape the shape of Snape. And that's what Neville's Bogart means. Okay. Because yeah. that's his name, Snape Bogart. And it's like, oh, is that his last name? I don't know. No, Severus Snape. Yeah, Severus, Severus Snape. Snape. I thought that's and what I thought. And does anybody have any theories why they gave Snape a glow in the dark face? Because he's so white. white? <laughs> <I guess. laughs> the actor's so he, pale. Does he glow in the movie? 
There's another one. I mean, honestly, look at his hands, too. Yeah. His they hands are light like, gray. gray. Yeah. I mean, if or you're going to give it to any yeah. cool character, I'd give it to Snape. So one of the problems with the glow-in-the-dark head is that it is the plastic is weaker and it cracks. It, the, his head really? gets a crack right down the middle of it. And because it is partially transparent, that you can see the crack pretty well. Actually, when they finally did give him light flesh, which was probably 2005, so like four years later, mm -hmm. that minifigure was really popular at the time because it was an actual Snape that had more, <laughs> more normal-looking skin. Yeah. It doesn't, finally. Look, doesn't look ill. Yeah. I mean, give him a white head. Why is he glowing? So, brings me to my next point. What is your favorite minifigure? Do you have a favorite? Ooh, you have to ask me first. Yeah. There's, there really is so many mm -hmm. unique Harry Potter figures. It, it probably wouldn't be because it's from the movie or something. It just would probably the way you look. be, it's just so cool looking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of them has to be Bellatrix Lestrange because <gasps> yes. her, her hair is, Helena Bottom Carter is just, she's just such I a cool her. character no matter what mm -hmm. movie she's in. I like the, the Gringotts goblins a lot. Um, the animals are all so cool. Mm -hmm. Fox, the, fa the Phoenix who we have here. That's a really unique Phoenix piece. It's marbled. It's got the red and light orange. You got the basilisk with the glow-in-the-dark fangs that are $16 each per fang. <laughs> You've got the Patronus stag. It would have to be one of the older original Harry Potter figures that mm -hmm. are just rare and you don't okay. see and you can't get anymore. You got Buckbeak, you know? I mean, there's just, there's so much. I, so Two different variants it's, of Buckbeak. Yeah, really hard to just say one minifigure, but I'm just kind of looking around. Professor Quirrell, like you said, had that two two faces. Mm -hmm. The big purple turban. And yeah. I just realized it was regular purple or dark purple in the original, and then they had the more lavender for the newer one. The original Luna Lovegood mm -hmm. was such a cool and unique figure for the time period. Mm -hmm. you know, with that, her just crazy colors that she has. So, you know, all Lego figures are kind of unique looking mm -hmm. now, but back then, the Harry Potter ones were special. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Hagrid being taller. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. A giant. Um, and the older ones had those weird little finger mm -hmm. grooves. <laughs> all right. One single individual figure that has always been my favorite Harry Potter minifigure was the Triwizard Challenge, uh, mm -hmm. Harry Potter, where it said... Potter on the back of his jersey. I just always thought that was really cool looking. It was a pretty unique figure. Specifically related to Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. What about you? I, I'm glad he went first because while he was talking, <laughs> it's like, man, um, I love some of the CMF Dumbledores because mm -hmm. they're just so over the top with their robes. The Madame Maxine is really it's just yeah. so different. Nearly Headless Nick mm -hmm. with, with his cool mm -hmm. little Renaissance outfit he's got the peter vakeman hair in light gray the old mcgonagall in the dark green and there's um Pro professor lockhart, lockhart. lockhart. I mean, oh. he even had the yellow skin there mm -hmm. and they've got him wearing what color is that sand pink salmon sand pink sand uh, salmon sa i mean it really looks kind of peachy and then he's got his tousled hair which is pretty unique to him as now, well is he super expensive just because of the color well, yeah, he's a rare figure. He's thirty dollars, and you could only get him in one set. And for the time, that that's all his parts are just so rare. If yeah. you wanted those legs or the arms, you could only get them in that figure. I did that. Or realize. the hairpiece, you know, the cape. Oh, the cape. Everything about him is that sand peach color. I'm yeah, like, I really don't know what whatever Lego they call color it. that is. But they uh, like to use the word sand, so it's yes. sand. Yeah, something. it's definitely a sand in the sand yeah. genre. Coral has that has the yellow head, and he's got that unique purple turban yeah. mm -hmm. that you really didn't get at the time. You didn't get those turbans very often. Those were uh, introduced with Indiana Jones, or was that before or after that? That would have been before Indiana Jones. Oh, so it was introduced with him. Because he's got yellow flesh. Oh, that's right. So it was yeah. before, and all he's... the Indiana Jones have the light Raven. flesh. Ravenclaw, Ravenclaw. He Claw. just had a moment of... <laughs> just... <laughs> Who's your favorite minifigure? My favorite. I pulled one of them. It's one of the newer Dementor yes. figures. I want to show that one closer to the camera. Yes. Whether it's the bottom, translucent, 
clear to black or the cape it's just an amazing minifigure in my opinion i just love the design i love the uniqueness that the figure brings that one or fred and george because i believe they yeah. do not have a separate minifigure Am I right? They it's the same the, minifigure and he's got a reversible a head. Reversible head. Yeah. And now they just came out with them. You now have Fred and George. Really? So yeah. there's the original. Mm -hmm. the, the OG. That's from Fred where and they George. had their And then you just um, spin his head around Weasley's, and you've got the other one. Weasley's which is great. Oh, it makes okay. a lot of sense. I like Did it. they the come out with one with a scar? Oh, um, one of them lost the ear. It ear. Was, it wasn't a it scar. It was yeah. George who lost the ear because sadly, spoiler alert, Fred <laughs> lost his life. So I've always loved them both as characters. So seeing them both individually now as minifigs is great. I really, speaking of characters, I really like them too. I am an identical twin and they're both really, really funny and sarcastic. They're the one people are always attracted to because they're always make light of situations and make things seem better. Unlike Cedric, who just is better than mm -hmm. anyone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Professor Sprout has that cool uh, hair hat combo, and Neville came with the Monster Book of Monsters, which... Free sets that LEGO is offering if you buy a certain amount, I believe. They're LEGO getting stuff. a lot of those in the store right now. They're, I think they're just... Uh, a lot of people get them and they don't really want them. Mm. They never asked for it. It's a free set. That was like the same thing same with thing this Same thing with that. The miniature, I would guess you could call it. People are turning that in? That's so cool. Oh, we've gotten so you many You have the Diagon little Weasleys, Wizard Weezes. That little tiny set is like a hundred dollars mm -hmm. and it's yeah, 119 very popular it's cheaper than the big diagonally yeah <laughs> <laughs> that big old Gino. that price per part ratio though speaking of uh diagonally here's the uh first diagonally they came out with and i think that would have been 2010 probably and that came oh it's heavy Oh, that came goodness. with Fred and George Weasley. If you turn it around, you can see the minifigures. Is that Ollivander? Ollivander. Mm -hmm. And that also has, shot. we don't have the box for it, but it does have unstuck stickers. Ooh. And wow. you would think that with the new Diagon Alley being out, that people wouldn't want the old one because the new one is so much better and it, the price per part ratio is cheaper. But people are buying the old one now. Well, this one has Borgen and Burks, which mm -hmm. the other one does not. Mm -hmm. The new one also, the minifigures in the new one are so expensive. Like the the newer Lego Harry Potter figures are cheap in general. They're very affordable because mm -hmm. I, th I think they're producing a lot of the sets. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're looking for expensive Harry Potter minifigures, the Diagon Alley minifigures are probably the most expensive. From the Harry newest one. From the newest okay. one. Okay. Yeah. It does not come with Gringotts either, right? The new one? Or does it? I, I can't remember. It does. No. Okay. Right. So this would actually probably make a good addition to the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, most expensive figure we have in the store. Uh, for the Harry most rare. Potter, there's two, and they're they're right up there together. It's the original Professor Umbridge, which was really unique at the time because she she was so pink, mm -hmm. and we we oh, don't have gosh. her right now. But if we did, she'd be about a hundred dollars. The other one is Trelawney. Professor Trelawney, mm -hmm. and she's really she's unique so too. Cool. She's got the the blue. She's got a cape. She's got a different color hat. Is that the hat. CMF one, or was there an original? No, one the original that? one. Oh, okay. Yeah, and she's a hundred dollars as well. So those those two, the original Trelawney and the original Umbridge, would be the two most expensive figures. Used to be Luna Lovegood was the most popular. Mm -hmm. and her and um, Bellatrix, but they just released. The new Luna Lovegood looks just like the old one, mm -hmm. and a Bellatrix that looks just like the old one. Mm -hmm. So the value of those have both gone down a lot. Oh wow! Okay. In fact, Luna Lovegood used to be about fifty to sixty dollars, and she's down oh, to dang. like twenty to thirty now. That's yeah. the original Burrow. That's the first one. Okay. So that's actually a really expensive set. That's actually sealed as well. And it, I think it's from 2010. What was really unique about it was the Bellatrix and the Molly and the Ginny. Yeah, those are crazy. Fenrir Greyback wasn't too popular. You know that reference, right, Fenrir? Reading uh, Norse mythology, yes. right? yeah. The wolf. Yeah, uh, J.K. Rowling put a lot of puns in her names and... Things like that. The Night Bus has been sitting here for a long time. Yes, let's talk about him. And I love the Night Bus because in England, in London, you mm -hmm. have double-decker buses. And this is a triple-decker mm -hmm. bus. It comes at night, and because it comes at night, it, it's got beds on it that you sleep in. 
And even Lego, the original, they've made like three or four night buses, but the original one had like, I think these printed pillows. And this one actually, you can see Harry's sleeping in there. <laughs> I remember the ride was pretty bumpy and crazy. And then, yeah. and then JK took it and spelled mm -hmm. night K-N-I-G-H-T. Mm-hmm. And and just put a like you said a pun. Just, she just kind of put a pun on. It. Yeah, it comes at night. It's you sleep on it, but it's a different spelled differently. I liked it because even the wizards who rode on it all the time hated it because they got sick and they were always they looked green when they were getting off of it. And it was a bus that came when you needed it. Mm -hmm. It just when you held it. Harry did it accidentally. I think it was just up here. He was like, okay. <laughs> different models are all look the same. They all look like the night bus, mm -hmm. but they are so different. You look at those. I mean, front. look at the building styles, the windows. Everything is very, very different parts. I see hinges on this. Does this open up? Yeah, it opens up uh -huh. from the side. Oh, and then we've got going to Hogwarts Express. Mm -hmm. We've got the, so the original? train, which they've made, what you said, how many versions? I think three. I, I believe Maybe they're four. probably up to four. Okay. Uh, this is the original, which is has the... The old train wheels. This is before they made newer style train wheels. In fact, these don't even turn. It's really just made for pushing. Oh, okay. And, you know, the, these wheels, the, they could probably fit on one of the new tracks if you spaced them out right. But these stickers peel off pretty easy. This is neat because it's all on hinges and you lift it up and there's the, in the engine, there's the, your suit where you put your trunk. Oh. <laughs> That's the storage, but also this is on hinges. I th is it on hinges? It's not on hinges. So that you just peel. You off, just have to take it off. Where right? the newer ones are all one piece that lifts off. Yeah, it's easier. These stickers are in really good shape for its age. Yeah, uh, we find these all the time with the sticker stickers peel. This, this was the original. This is the old, the old grays. So this was two thousand one. Oh, okay. When they first came out with them. The newer ones now, we have one upstairs in our city that we have built, mm -hmm. and it comes with a coal car, and I think the one back there from 2010 has the coal car as well. Yes. Okay. And inside the coal car, there's a 9-volt train engine. What else do you want to talk about? What other interesting sets? You said you wanted to return to this one a well, little bit. Yeah, so this has Victor Crumb with the shark's head. That's very popular. This is the only time I've ever seen this box, is when we got this in. This has the sirens in it. One siren, the mermaid, which was the possibly the first Lego mermaid. Because um, afterwards they had character. Pirates of the Caribbean that had a bunch of them. Yeah, okay. did, yeah, and they did make some in like some fantasy pirate set. Yeah, stuff and there's and, the CMFs. There's two or three CMF yeah. mermaids. But this might have been the first mermaid character with the mermaid tail. Huh. She's got unique hair. Her head's unique. Yeah. Um, Harry and Hermione. A lot of people might think that they're sleeping when they find those minifigures. But they're actually in like that comatose state mm -hmm. where they're underwater. So that's why the other side of their head is closed. And then Victor Crumb with his shark head, I think he's like a, he's really rare. He's probably like a $50 minifigure. Really? Yeah. Do we have him by himself? We outside don't. Outside of the set? Okay. No. He is, he's really popular. That shark's head was really the first time you could take a shark's head and put it on a minifigure. And they never used that again, did they? Not that specific mold. No, they, they made one like it in the Atlantis series. Yes. But, but not exactly like it. Because that's hard plastic, and the one the Atlantis series used was rubber. And then Harry's got those from gills. From the gillyweed. From the gillyweed, yeah. The gillyweed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of the names of this stuff. And yeah. is that a chrome dagger in there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they put a chrome dagger in there. That's awesome. I like the jellyfish. The medium blue, and that medium blue halberd or pike was in the Knight's Kingdom sets mm -hmm. that were coming out at the same time, and they reused it in this set. So that's a really unique set. Yeah, I like the dark green. The jellyfish that you mentioned, the translite blue, mm -hmm. I think that color only came in this set because you had a lot in SpongeBob sets. But they were clear, weren't they? They were clear. Yeah. And then you had trans pink in a lot of Harry Potter sets they used for something. Mm -hmm. And then it's a, it is just a chef's hat. And we were talking about the sorting hat. Mm -hmm. yes. And this is one of the original sorting hat sets <gasps> where it, you actually spin the wheel. Okay, that's amazing. And it tells you which house you're in. How Sorry. much is this set? 
if it was uh, complete. Well, it's small. It only has Harry Potter and Harry Hedwig in it, and um, it's probably not twenty dollars. Really, yeah. even with that? Yeah, it's really not an expensive set. You, it's only what a dozen parts. Okay, even with this super unique. Plate. Plate. Yeah, that's that. It is unique, but it it's not a super it's expensive piece or usable. So that's a really neat, neat little set there. Anything with the logos and the banners, mm -hmm. the house mm -hmm. banners on it reminds me of Game of Thrones. You know, yes. you've got your house the banners. Houses. This is the stand from the the uh, big Hogwarts castle. That comes yeah. with the biggest the, one, the four hundred dollar one. That yeah. comes with the yeah. four founding. Being lizards. these are printed and parts, witches. which is nice. And we, for some reason, this was used at, in a promotion, and we got like fifty of these. Oh, awesome! Just the stands, the, no just figures. the stands. I wonder if there were figures that uh, you know, went, went with them, but we didn't get the figures. We just got the. Stands. I can't imagine Lego gave out those super exclusive figures oh, in I don't promotions, know. unless they were rare promotions. They probably gave them to crew or something like that. Or... But the, that is, those are printed house tiles. Yeah, you get. Let me get a closer look. We for have a, five dollars, we've got tons of those. Yeah, we know what we're going yes. to get. Well, they these. are good price. That's a great price. I that love them. Is. Just their little, the little animals. And it's you get so all cute. these other pieces with it too. It's not just yeah. five dollars for the tiles. Going back to we had talked about the uh, monster book of monsters. They also did a printed book of it. Oh wow! That's the newer printed book, right? No, that's, no, that's uh, is that the old one? Yeah, because yeah, oh, the newer one the new, has CMF like, actually has a new printed. Neville is holding it. Right. Oh yeah, they. Oh yeah, that's a really special one. So cool! I noticed that as we were bringing it down, and I was like, "Oh, that's amazing." While we're talking about the CMF figures, this is from the series two. Ron, he's got a mug of butterbeer. Mm -hmm. I love the little cup. Full, you know, it's got. It looks like it has liquid in it. Yes. It's so neat. And then you have printed arms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The detail on that figure is such high quality. And they that was the series that they introduced the mid-legs. Yes. The bendable mid-legs, which hasn't cropped up too many times since then. Mm -hmm. And look at the difference. I think it's uh, the goblin. Grip hook. Is grip hook. Look at the difference in over the years how he has changed such detail that which is uh wicket warren w wicket t warren by the way the actor he also played um was in star wars and mm -hmm. willow right and he was two characters he was also the short professor flitwick flitwick was yeah. he yeah he was grip hook and Switch flitwick and flick <laughs> and outside. he's got the printed arms too oh yeah. and that sort of gryffindor which is amazing is Amazing. Oh, yeah. I don't care if you like Harry Potter or not. That That's is cool the best sword. Lego sword yeah. they've ever made. I yes. hope they do more stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got the gems that glow, translucent gems. They've redone so many. Yeah. So I usually ask this question in our in our theme vodcast, but is there a set that you guys think is in need of a redo? Harry Potter is still ongoing. Yeah. Um, while you're thinking, I'll keep talking. Um, the Durmstrom ship. Durham Spring Trip. Okay, yeah. that would be your vote. Yeah, and it's funny because the with the newer series, they made the girls' uh, the carriage, Bobatons. which yes. is right, the built the Bobatons. I think carriage. I think they pronounce it Bobaton. So they made the carriage, but they didn't make the Durham Spring Trip ship yeah. from that. And came with Fleur and her little sister. Mm hmm With those cool, unique oh. hats. I, I have one of the hats. I went online and probably spent a little too much the money on Basilisk, Etsy. The Basilisk, which I did hear they're making. Mm -hmm. I heard they're making another one of these uh, the, Basilisks. So, yeah, that's what I was going to say. The rumor is they're going to start a legacy line of Harry Potter. They're going to redo the castles again, this time with the sand green roof. And one of the ones that everyone's guessing they're going to do is a new Basilisk. Because they haven't done it in its full glory since then. They've had the microscale one that they just used Nagini, and then they had a small buildable one, which was kind of pathetic. Which I think they had Nagini in other the early sets from from two thousand one. The first sets they had Nagini. He was just a green snake. Really? Yeah. He I was, believe Nagini was a girl, right? I think so. Yes. She. Yeah. Sorry. She, yeah. She was in uh, one of the sets as just a green snake. It was probably like the Hogwarts. Set. Really? Yeah. As far as the basilisk, though, yeah, I I would agree with you. Like a new chamber of secrets with a more molded head, because that head is amazing. And the glow in the dark. Speaking of chamber of secrets, mm -hmm. apparently they're coming out with a chess set, a two hundred and fifty dollar chess set. Oh my goodness! With Ron, Hermione, and 
Harry, the statues from the chess set. So it's actually it's a two in one set. It's More a Lando chess game. Board games. It's a chess game, and it's a the play scene. Oh, that's. I'm amazing. sorry, I just died. Yeah, that's, that's so exciting. So is it, is it going to be build? Are they going to be minifigures on molded horses? Is that why it's so expensive? Or is it going to be all buildable? It's going to be a big chess set with with minifigure scale. So you've got the characters on. I don't. I don't know if it's. I haven't seen any images or anything. It's just a rumor. But it's a. But it's a rumor with a price tag on it already. So it's a pretty good rumor. Pro. Yeah. Yeah. That I, is awesome. To answer your question about a set that I would want to see made, mm-hmm. I'm blanking on the scene, but I can vaguely remember. It's from one of like the later movies when they go and get the little like orb or whatever. I don't want to say mm-hmm. it's the rumor requirement, but they are running through all these like shelves full of all these little like glass balls. I'm really. I'm oh, when they were in the ministry. Yes, the ministry of magic the, scene. In the, the whatever the the. The giant the, vault. Yeah, it was the uh, what do they call it? Um, file thirteen, like the yes. the experimental. Yeah. Because you can add Bellatrix into that yeah. set. You can because then at the very end they get to that giant portal, and you see all the former like a lot of order the Phoenix members come up. Sirius Black, Tonks, Lupin. They and all they've never up. done that scene. Did they, they haven't. No, is Tonks a minifigure? Does she have a minifigure? Yeah, she came, I thought, in a burrow? In one of the burrows, didn't she? Who's Tonks? Tonks is that... Lupin's wife. Yeah, they just... Her full name is Nymphadora. Nymphadora Tonks. Tonks. She keeps telling him, don't call me Nymphadora. I don't remember seeing her unless she came out in a a newer She. Speaking of unique things, you know how different Force users in Star Wars have different unique powers. Mm -hmm. She was the one person they mentioned that had a natural gift for a very specific type of magic. Mm -hmm. No one else in Harry Potter I remember they ever mentioned, but she was kind of a freak in the sense that she could change her face at will without spells. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So she was she could like there was a scene where she was making her nose a pig nose to make the kids laugh, or her hair color would always be different because she could just think about it and do it hmm. without a wand and without words. She was just special like that, and it didn't did it ever come up? Like was it part of the story? Did I that ever? I believe it got brought up in the books for like a split second. But like as far as the plot, no. was it ever like a key moment? Like let's no. use her. Okay. Except for that moment you were talking about, but you almost got into it. You mentioned Star Wars. She was in Star Wars. She was just in The Mandalorian. Was she? She played the, twi- the p- pink purple Twi'lek that, that Mando had a past with. Yes. That was her yes. actress. Yes, that's right. When the prison ship. Mm-hmm. Yep. That was her actress. That was her. I knew I saw her. Okay. Before, yeah. She's been in other things, too. Yeah, she's, she's been in a lot. She's an amazing actress. And just seeing her across both parallels. Speaking of Lupin, because yes. we're talking about Lupin's wife. Mm-hmm. This is the original Shrieking Shack. Which is awesome. <laughs> It is so rare. I don't think I've ever seen that box until we just had it come in recently. Um, Look at Harry peeking out the little window. Like, where's my professor going? It comes with a box that is pretty big. It's really weird for Lego. It's got metal screws in it, and you push a button on top, and it it makes stuff disappear. Yeah, that's how, what, Lupin yeah. transforms or something like that? So it's, This is, let's see, the date on this. Oh no, it's not how Sirius turns into, into um, the black dog. Padfoot. Because it was Padfoot, Prongs, Moody, or. That's right. It was those present to you, the Marauders. Wormtail. Wormtail. I can't find the year, but it's. The blue boxes are. The, the production runs weren't very many. Did didn't... that piece only come in that set? Was it ever in Oh, yeah, and only came in this set. Never came in anything else. I remember when I first started working here, I found that just in a giant box of pieces. And I had no idea. It said Lego all over it, but I had no idea what it was. But to reiterate what Chris was saying, it's a single piece with a spring loaded action in it. You can load it up with one thing put it over a character, push the button, and it'll switch what comes out. And that's how you would turn <clears throat> them into their animals. They show it right there. I would love a set with just the Marauders in it. Yeah. All four of them. Oh. Yeah. This, so this is from 2004, and they really didn't come out with very many of these blue box sets in 2004. Mm-hmm. I really like to see where Lego is made, and it tells you a lot about the product and mm-hmm. what was going on with the company at mm-hmm. the time. This says components made in Denmark, Switzerland. So they were still making mm-hmm. them in Denmark and Switzerland, which they still are today, just not as often. Yeah. Uh, Korea, mm-hmm. not North Korea, not South Korea, just Korea, China, and Hong Kong. Okay. Right? 
which is, you know, this, this is when they first started making them in China. And I believe what they made in China is that special box. That mm. was the only thing they made in this set from that. So the part, the components in this truly were probably made in different factories all over the world. Yeah. That's crazy. And they have the uh, ghosted version of the other mm -hmm. sets. So cool. To add. Was this the only set from uh, um, Hogsmeade? It's the only one I can think of. Uh, it's got the wood, the tan printed wood pant, uh, oh. tiles, which are just super, super rare to this set. And you could imagine how often you would want to use printed wood tiles and oh, yeah. not have them. And the Lupin wolf head. <laughs> it looks Another so silly. Bizarre. You know, they used it in studios, too. That's right. A the studio werewolf. set. But right? it, it still makes for an expensive minifigure. He's about $50. Yeah, I would love a Marauder's set with them. Okay, that's a good from one. their age. Because mm -hmm. just, I the love flashback. The, the flashback moments. I love those. And another funny, I just have so many parallel moments with these actors that I know of. The guy who plays young James Potter is the same actor, Andrew Taylor Johnson, who played Quicksilver in the Marvel movies. Really? In Age of Ultron. That's, That's the, same the same guy? Actor. Oh, okay. Huh. This, what was this one from? They're getting key, flying keys? That's oh, uh, Chamber well. of Secrets. Mm -hmm. Key was the first one, because there were all key three was, in there. Yeah, the key was the first. The keys was the first one. They had to find the... The chest was the second, because that took out Ron. Yeah, and then the potions took out Hermione. Hermione, so, and that left Harry. People find these these Harry, these rare, older Harry Potter pieces in Lego collections all the time, and they probably throw away the Queen's crown. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. That that's crawl. just such an odd-looking piece, that Queen's crown on top of the white, mm -hmm. monochrome white so shiny. minifigure. It does not look like Lego. It was the only time they used it in a set that I'm aware of. And then they also gave you the feathers that you would think like a blue feather that looks like it goes on an Indian spear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's like, where would it, what Indian had a blue feather? And I've actually I found that before, and I'm like, where did this come from? Yeah, because that was a piece Very held water. over from uh, Western, right? It was on the Western sets. Okay. Yeah, it went on their spears, and it, but they you know, not in blue used it, but not in blue. Yeah, so this you you get a lot of white ones, and then you get one That's blue cool. one. And we're selling this for fifty dollars, which is is not that bad for that much. Well, unique, it's pretty a lot of parts too. You know, yeah, you, you get the OG. Harry Potter and Ron Weasley. The scary Ron face. Not the scariest. Not the scariest. There's, there's scary ones. <laughs> we'll do a close-up of that. I wonder why they didn't use a white minifig head to make it look more it like a statue. might have something to do oh, with how the face uh, goes on there. I don't know. That that doesn't look like, like a it normal stud, be... does it? Mm -mm. A normal Maybe it's attached? One by one Do you think brick. it's attached? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Oh. Again, these Harry Potter sets have such unique pieces of, mm -hmm. even today they're very unique with yeah. the Gryffindor sword and the Butterbeer <laughs> mugs yeah so which cute. if you're a Harry Potter fan you know Butterbeer and I'm sure you've had some it's it's just so good Butterbeer it, I we did not Universal, try it when we, we had, went there I, I think you can get it in four or five different forms yes. you can get it hot frozen mm -hmm. iced and then, and then ice cream yes the and float. we had all of them multiple times because it is so good. I'm a butterscotch fan, so I love the butterbeer. Now, in Harry Potter canon, is butterbeer alcoholic? No. It's not. I believe it's just a lot of sugar. But no, like in that set that you were talking about with the little butterbeer cups, they have a little baby Harry, so it gives him a, technically another oh, mini yeah. pig. Yeah. He looks like a little another bread Harry roll. Another Harry Potter minifig yes. there, a little baby Harry. Which is not as cute as baby Voldemort, I think. We do have a rare minifigure over there yeah, okay. in the original Mad-Eye Moody. He's he's expensive. He's $45. Mm. And he was very hard to get. I cannot remember what set he came in, but he was a pretty unique figure for a while. He's a figure that's actually gone down in price because they came out with the new one in the CMF series. Mm -hmm. So he used to be like $60, 60 to $80. Now he's 45 Does he have a, the separate head where he's really, what's his face? No, he doesn't. No, nope. no separate face. David Tennant. We could have used a little more David Tennant in Harry Potter. He's, he's just, from Doctor Who. He's yeah. just such a great character. Yeah. Great actor. I didn't realize that was David Tennant. Mm -hmm. I, I know him You only as... ever, like, see him in one scene as David Tennant. And, like, as, like, the actor showing himself. But... Oh, he was the bad guy. Yeah. Okay, I was going to say I thought David Tennant was very thin. I know him as the voice of the new Scrooge McDuck. 
Uh, <laughs> really? Yes. Tales. Wow. The current Scrooge McDuck, mm-hmm. that's David Tennant, because they wanted a real Scottish accent. I bet I'm not the only one that has this problem, but as I'm sorting minifigures, I come across this Harry Potter with this sand green torso. Mm-hmm. I, I, can you guys think of what he's from? I can't think of what set that's from. But he's got that sand green torso, and what does that look like to you? The original Luke Skywalker, when he's got Yoda on his back came with the, oh the, is that what that is yeah well that's what it looks like it's not the same part but uh, many times i have been like oh why does luke skywalker have these same green arms and i'll pull them off and i'll put the the yellow arms oh on no oh. And, it, and it looks like the original yellow luke skywalker when he's carrying yoda around oh. his back. all right so any other Things we want to say about Harry Potter. Are there any things you you guys are really looking forward to with maybe this legacy line that they might be producing? Have you heard of it? I've heard of it. I remember there was a Lego live stream that what happened, and I hopped in for a little bit, but they were just talking at that point. I did hear a rumor about gold, gold minifigures, like they did with Ninjago. Yes. Gold Harry Potter minifigures. Yes. And I think they said they were doing wrong. I think one of them they showed was, they showed one of them, I believe. Really? That's what I, I was talking to someone and they said, oh yeah, they showed one. And I was like, what? So I'm going to, I'm wondering if they're going to do like all of them or like all like the main characters yeah. gold. And if so, that would be very interesting. In oh, okay. Opinion. Those would be very nice little like collector yeah. pieces. And they'll fix. probably do it like the way they're doing Ninjago now. Some of them will be big sets, some of them will yes. be small sets. I imagine Harry Potter would be in a cheaper set because that's the one most people would want. Yeah. So they'd make him more readily available. Or they might be mean and put him in the you giant never, castle. You, know, you never know with Lego. You <laughs> yeah. never know. And people have a lot of Harry Potter minifigures already. Yeah. So maybe they don't want the Harry Potter. A gold Harry Potter, that's gold. true. Something we didn't mention, probably because we don't have it, is the original Hungarian horn tail set. We've had it recently. Mm -hmm. The dragon itself is very cool. The older dragon is better than the new dragon. Why is is that? Odd. This new dragon is smaller and just not as beefy. Like that, you know, the Hungarian horntail was a mean looking dragon. It was. That dragon's not that mean looking. Yeah. The older one was bigger and better looking, in my opinion. It had that huge specialized Mm -hmm. piece, which is head, neck, and body were all one piece. And the set had some rare parts in it. It had like the ball, the egg, maybe? It was a ball. It was like a basketball. And I think it was had a a piece of metal in it for being magnet, magnetized. Really? Yeah. And if you were to find it in the Lego collection, you might throw it away because you wouldn't know it was Lego. What I do like about this is that golden egg is awesome. Yeah. It's got a really cool egg. Awesome. And then you do get all four contestants in it, which is really cool. And then once again, Harry is shorter than everybody. Because he's younger, yeah, he has the mid-legs. That is a cool golden egg. I, this one I meant to get and I passed it by. We still have it. That's retail, right? $30, yeah. Because we have plenty of these. Get them, get these new sets while you can because they'll never be this cheap. And get the minifigures right now while you can because they'll never be this cheap. The only new ones that are expensive right now are the ones from the Diagon Alley set. Yeah, Diagon it's set. impossible to... Yeah, but they those should go down a little bit as that set stays on the market before they go back up. Okay. Okay. So when when a Lego set first comes out, the minifigures are high. So like these this is a thirty dollar set. These guys would have been about ten dollars each. Yeah. Maybe twelve dollars each. Uh then they go after they've been out on the market for a few months, they start to go back down in price because they're starting to get out there and more people are selling them. Yeah. And and then you can also find used ones out there for cheaper. And, you know, they might be down to like five or four to six dollars each. But then once it's off the market is when it they start to just absolutely climb. Like, yes. uh, you know, they only put Cedric Dickery, Diggory in his robe with his coat on for the Tribe Wizard Challenge in these sets. And same thing with Victor Crumb. Victor Crumb's probably going to be worth a lot from that set because they didn't come out with a whole bunch of them in this mm-hmm. series. That's an interesting insider tip. So if I wanted, say, the Golden Woo from the Ninjago City Garden, when is that sweet time? What, how long well, after it came out? Because so that's Ninjago that... City Garden just okay. came out yeah, about a month ago, right? Mm-hmm. So don't get it now. It's too expensive. Okay. I think um, it's going for $45 now. Yeah. So if you wait two months, it should be down to 20 And then six months after that, once they take it back off the market, it's going to start to go back. Go up. back up to 30 yeah. and 40 Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Insider tip from the pro and if they come back out with a minifigure that looks 
too much like the original, mm-hmm. the original price will go back down. So kind of okay. like Mad Eye Moody and Luna Lovegood and Bellatrix Lestrange. Okay. However, if they look way different than the original figure, like Trelawney or Umbridge, the price could stay up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Anything else we want to show off before we sign out? No, uh, we. We are going to have another Harry Potter podcast mm-hmm. where we yes. cover the next, uh, the last three. Last three movies. Yep. The last four movies, four. but three books. Three four <laughs> movies, and then we'll probably also do Fantastic Beasts. Yes. Maybe. Maybe by then there'll be new sets, and we'll 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 make it two more episodes yeah. if yeah. this was a good one. Maybe and you we'll said, more. like you said, Definitely Hollows didn't have any sets. Right or very uh, few? Not, not. Uh, there, there's sets that you could say was definitely hollows, but then like they put Harry Potter in that set where mm-hmm. he's got his school uniform on, and he never had his school uniform on in that yep. set in that movie. So it it kind of could be Deathly Hollows, but it's not specifically named. Got Deathly it. Hollows. Okay, so one more thing. Yes. Uh, the Graves minifigure, mm-hmm. Graves slash Grindelwald minifigure, who is. Colin Farrell, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorite actors. I like him a lot as an actor because he's been some cool characters such yeah. as uh, Bullseye in the Marvel Universe. Yes. You know, in the Daredevil film. This minifigure was a chase minifigure where they only put one in each box. And that's that was kind of a unique thing for Lego oh. CMF figures. So, and actually he was always in the same spot in that box. So it was really? a box of 60 and he was always in the back, the third or fourth one from the back left. Now they, huh. they have changed that because they, they're constantly changing the CMF yeah. line. The CMF is a whole new, you know, a whole nother conversation, a whole yeah. nother podcast. But, uh, you know, they, they used to put barcodes on the CMF pack. So you knew who we were in them. Then they went to bump codes. Mm-hmm. Now you just have to feel them. Mm-hmm. Now they yeah. have the video ones where you can't feel anything because they're in boxes. Yeah, <laughs> but making it harder for us. I kind of thought he would go down in price, and so when he first came out, he was thirty dollars. Everybody wanted him, and people were bringing him in left and right because you could easily just go get a brand new box, grab him from that back left corner, bring him into our store, and automatically get. You know, he only retail for four bucks. You mm-hmm. could automatically get. I don't know, fifteen, twenty dollars in store credit. We were getting so many of them in, and I was worried that he would go down in price because he was so easy to find. But he's actually held his value, and we're go. selling him for twenty dollars. And he's probably online. If you if you wanted to, you could probably sell him for about thirty dollars right now. I had no idea it was a chase because I just yeah. happened to find him. Really? So I had no idea okay. he was rare. Well, he was easy to find because he was flat. He didn't have any big pieces. Yeah. He had two hair pieces in there. That was uh-huh. how I found him. Yeah. I wanted him because I could use that hair piece for Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Not because I care about Colin Farrell. Or Dr. Farrell. Strange. Or Dr. Oh, Strange. Yeah. Like that. That's interesting. I did not realize there was only one in a box. I always wanted to ask you, how the heck do you get an unopened box? Can you buy those directly from Lego? Will they sell you an unopened box? Because I heard no. But yet you see people on o- online all the time. Do they have friends at Target? And that's how they get them? So I've been to... Uh, I, one of the easiest places I've gotten on open boxes is Five Below because yes. they just don't really care. <laughs> you know? they, and they're easy. You know, it's just a small store. So it's an easy store to go into and say, hey, can you check see if you have any sealed boxes in the back? And they bring out a sealed box. Yeah. So back in Series 10 with the CMF figures where Mr. Gold was out there... I was going to Five Below and getting okay. sealed boxes, and me and my family would just sit around and open up all these packs, you know. And, Did you um, ever find one? No, no. I've had I've had a few come through my possession, but um, real ones, not fake. Oh yeah, real ones. Wow. And, uh, he's actually another one that's gone up in value. Where I thought he would go down in value, but he's gone up in value over the years. So yeah, that's an easy way to get a sealed box is to go into like a a smaller Lego retailer, oh, okay. like Five Below or something. You could get one from Walmart or Target. They're just it's hard to get service there because they're yeah. bigger box stores. Yeah. So it's hard with Target, I find. But just about yeah. everybody, you know, Barnes and Nobles, Books a Million, uh, Joanne Fabrics, Joanne Kohl's. Fabrics. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could get sealed boxes from anywhere now. Just, so just got Michael's smile, <laughs> smile, be polite, and ask the right person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Insider tip yeah. number two. 
If you go number two hundred, you know, go go to find one of the workers and be like, hey, you got a little yeah, box yeah. of hey, here. And there, there might be a dollar in it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a mini fake. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much. We'll continue with our Star Wars theme. We'll continue with our Harry Potter vodcast. CMF theme coming up. CMF. Should we already be have one. it lined up. We have a guest lined up. That's an expert. Excellent. Um, people have suggested pirates. I, I still want to do that one about board, board games. games. <laughs> that sounds boring. You know what? We'll, we'll have a good time with that Are one. Are you going to come be on that one? I, if I can, I That's love awesome. like a board game. Okay. All right. Gee, who wants to watch Justin and Jillian play board games? I, I'm bringing my that brother on that one as okay. a special guest. <laughs> so you get to meet my brother. Um, Didn't they make a Harry Potter one? They yes, did. They, yes did. they did. They did. Yeah. They did. It's very popular, too. So uh, I really like it. But I'll talk about that. And why I like it on that vodcast, whenever we do it. We are available as a full podcast if you like just the audio experience and listen to our brilliant punditry and mispronouncing these British terms. We love you, England. <laughs> and we will see you very, very soon. <clears throat> Anything else? Nope. No. Nope. All right. Uh, favorite spell? Abracadabra. Right. <laughs> Abracadabra. <laughs> <laughs>